This is the movies, TV, and authors, and we, we have two very special guests among us, plus the three boring people that you've been <laughs> seeing all weekend long. Um, because you've been seeing us all weekend long, we thought that we would enlist some people who actually knew what they were talking about. <laughs> We've got two of our VIP guests that we warned you that people would be coming on off, off and on. We have Mark Scott Zickery, who has um, had over 100 scripts produced. Uh, he's worked for Sliders and uh, Star Trek Next Generation, and he's worked for Deep Space Nine and for the new Twilight Zone and Babylon 5. And uh, so he's, he's an impressive guy, and he knows what he's talking about, and he knows more than we do about the subject, so he's here. And also, next to him, the man with the hat, is Stephen L. Sears, who... This guy has been around since before there was sound in movies. <laughs> yeah. As I used to put it, I, I was around when the Flintstones was actually a reality series. Yes, a reality TV series. <laughs> Steve, uh, uh, he actually wrote for the A-Team and for Riptide. And, but you, you would probably know him best as the executive producer of Xena Warrior Princess. And we first met Steve when Rebecca and I were guests of honor at a little science fiction convention in Cincinnati or yeah, something Cincinnati. like that. And we were the guest of honor authors, and I had all these best-selling things, and Steve was the TV producer show, and we were all doing talks, and he had armies of these gorgeous women falling all over him. And I <laughs> saw the difference between being a TV guy and being a novel guy. Um, anyway, these guys are going to um, also contribute to this panel, and... Dave is going to be our moderator, so. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's a, a number of things that we can talk about, and, and I really want to give these guys most of the time. And rather than having us talk at the end about uh, taking our books and turning them into movies, maybe we could take uh, a couple of minutes and just uh, talk about how that typically is done in Hollywood. Um, and I, I think I'll go ahead and start with Kevin. And let's just talk about, uh, you, you've had a couple of things that have been optioned, picked up. Well, I mean, this, this will be a big part of the panel, I think, but the, there's something called an option. That's when somebody, some big producer, usually somebody who writes me on Facebook saying, I couldn't find your agent, so I tracked you down here, and I'm a big producer. I want to option your property to make it into a big movie. Avatar's big, so I want your book to be the next big movie. And then you check out this guy, and he doesn't have any credits and he's got a website that's about paranormal activity and you wonder just how great of a producer he is. Uh, and then they always say, but I don't have any money for you. I want to make a $300 million movie of your, of your uh, book, but I can't offer you $50 for an option. So there, it kind of makes me wonder where they're going to get the $300 million from. I guess my main thing, and I've, I've sold books outright to Universal Studios, I've sold options for things. I've sold options for somebody who actually paid me money, Steve Sears optioned my uh, Captain Nemo book a couple of times, and we tried and tried to get it, and, and it's, these guys will talk more about having the movie go into production once they get your book. But this is the most important thing you're going to hear all weekend long. <laughs> when somebody from Hollywood calls and says that they love your book and they're going to option it, don't get excited. It's something interesting, say, thanks, show me the money most of the time they will just go away. Sometimes they will come back and they will be serious about it, but even if they do option it, it's not likely to get made. But it's still kind of cool to put on your resume that this has been optioned for production by a major producer who has a website about paranormal activity. <laughs> well, and, and from our perspective as the writers, it's free money because it's money for something we've already done and um, you know, optioning, Kevin didn't exactly explain what it is, it's um, someone will give you a contract to option your novel property um, and during which they will buy, they will tie up the rights for a number of years. They will pay you a little bit every time period, 18 months, every year, every two years, depending on the option, and to not sell it to anyone else while they work to try and develop it to get a movie made. If they do get a movie into production, then they pay you a large dump of money um, usually the option money, some of it or all of it, has come out of that. So um, if you get an option, for instance, for uh, $500,000 paid to you if the movie goes into production, 
generally somewhere around 10% every 18 months. These guys can give you the real figures, but that's what I've seen. 10% every 18 months, they will pay you to not sell it to anyone else. And you'll do the entire contract up front, just as if you're selling the movie. And then you'll get these little, little payments. And so $50,000 every 18 months um, for a book you've already written, for someone to not make a movie of your book is actually really cool. <laughs> But $50,000 is not typical. It's more like $50 or $500. Is it, can, what... it can range. And there's also, and I'm not recommending this, there are also free options mm -hmm. that you may want to take if the person you're dealing with is somebody that you respect and can possibly do something. Now, Steve's I don't here. read Mecham. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I think I, I lost a lunch bet. That's how I ended up with your book. And, and it can um, run... <laughs> Yeah, but you don't 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 go into it thinking, oh, I'm just going to give away the option. You know, use your discretion. Yeah, you do, and, and realize that an options are really malleable. You can do an option for a week. If somebody says, I'm going to go meet with uh, Warner Brothers tomorrow, um, I'd like to option this book. Um, I don't have any money. You know, okay, you can have an option until tomorrow night at five o'clock. You know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but I'll just say, uh, my my friend Ted Sturgeon used to say, never spend if come. Because what a, a lot of people do is they, um, they, they oh, Hollywood wants my, my thing, and they immediately see it as a movie, it's out, and they're accepting their Oscar and all of this. No, 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 it's exactly what they've been saying. You assume 